If you can't tell by her... If you can't... If you can't tell... Well, I guess I'm going to have to use a voiceover for most of this video because Daisy is just being way too loud. Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. If you can't tell by her very loud, very sudden screaming, Daisy, our pregnant goat, is finally in labor. Violet, her sister, gave birth a couple days ago, and ever since then we have been on pins and needles waiting for Daisy to give birth. They were bred at the same time, so we weren't sure who was going to go first, and we weren't sure exactly when they were even going to have babies in the first place. So Daisy could have been one week or two weeks or even three weeks after Violet. But thankfully, today is September 1st, just a few days after August 27th, when Violet gave birth. And Daisy, her sister, is in very early labor. Last night, her ligaments got very loose, and this morning they are completely gone. She has a tiny, tiny bit of goop. It's not even a string, but it's just a tiny little, like, glob. And all of a sudden, she has been screaming and screaming all morning. Now, if this was her little sister, Aletha, screaming all the time, things would be a different story, because Aletha is just a naturally loud goat, and she screams all the time for fun. But Daisy is a much more quiet goat, so the fact that all of a sudden she's being very loud is indicative of pain or discomfort, and hopefully that she's going to have babies today. So, after Violet beginning labor at 10.30 in the morning and actually giving birth at 7 o'clock in the evening, we were very wary about wasting our time with Daisy. We didn't want to hover around her and spend hours outside in the heat watching her and get all tired out and then end up going inside because we had things to do or we were super hot and end up missing the birth. So instead of camping out in the field with hammocks and chairs for hours and hours doing nothing, most of the family stayed inside and either me or my sister would come out every hour or so and just set eyes on Daisy and make sure she was doing okay. And for a long, long while, there were no changes. She was being very loud the entire time, but there was no change in her udder. There was no change in her goop status. She still just had a tiny bit of goop. Nothing much externally that we could see was happening, though by her complaints, a lot of internal stuff was probably shifting around, which is a good sign. So the shenanigans began around 8 this morning, and it's now around noon, maybe more like 1 o'clock, and I'm coming down to check on Daisy, and I think Daisy has finally progressed from early labor to more active labor, and it's looking like she's going to start pushing soon. I think Daisy's pushing. Oh, I wish I brought my phone out here. I could call everyone else, but I don't have the phone. Are you getting really close? That is so good. good, girl. good girl. I think he's coming soon. Here he comes. Oh, okay, okay. Look at that super full udder. My goodness. She does not want to be near people. So, um, I might just look from afar. Oh my goodness! Did you guys see that? She just rolled on her back. So if she doesn't want to be by me, that's okay. I'll just watch from afar and assist as necessary. But I may not be able to get the best footage of everything. But I'll try. But it may not work that well. Come on, mom. You can do it. Almost there. Alisa, stay back. Stay back. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy. Goodness, girl. Is that a big baby in there? Good job. <laughs> Yay! It broke. Okay, stand up. Okay. Position yourself better. That's a good idea. Can I be over here by you? Is that okay? She's almost ready! Yeah, she's pushing! That was mom checking in from the cat deck. I forgot to bring my phone out here with me so I couldn't call them. But thankfully she checked up on me. Are you licking that fluid? That's good! Good practice! Let me get a picture of that. Oh, he's so pretty. 
she's got blood and it's coming out from the inside of her. Last time we had blood like that, we had a stuck baby that was with Millie earlier this year in January. So I'm a bit concerned, but we'll wait a little bit and see what happens. I'm over here by the barrel, just in time. I think the baby is finally presenting. She had like a sack of something and it burst. There's now blood and goop at places, but no baby yet. My sister is managing to get her way through the briars. Thank you, dear Lord, that she's waiting for my sister. Some sack thingy is presenting itself, but she isn't pushing yet. She's waiting for you. Come around. You can come stand by this, uh, something. She was having very interesting contractions. She was, like, rolling around and stuff, <coughs> which was concerning. Screaming all day and rolling, like, literally on her back. I have it on the video if I show you. I... So I don't see any little feetsies, which there should be two little white nubbies in there. So, um, if you would push, mommy, stuff would come out more. She's eating. That's moss, not your baby. It's just <laughs> moss. Alisa. <laughs> She's Alisa. like, what are you licking? I want to eat it too. <laughs> You're not a mommy. You don't have the urge to lick mucus. It's not yummy. Alisa thinks it's like grain or treats or something. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, Alisa. You're gonna push mommy? We, if we interfere, it could just be bad. She just started, like, having. Oh, yeah. Are we. Oh, oh the sack okay. broke. Two sacks have broken. Like, come out and broken, but no, like, actual babies yet. If she would just push a couple times, something might happen. <coughs> she was pushing like crazy a while ago. You can move closer. <coughs> Good job. Good pushing. Good, good. She's a very dramatic pusher. So this whole birthing experience was very different, very strange, and very stressful, very bad, and very educational for us, and that's why I'm sharing it. So at this point, I am getting pretty worried. So while part of me wants to just let nature be nature and not intervene because it can make things worse, it also has a high likelihood of making things better, and I was getting pretty worried about things, so I gloved up and started feeling around. I was able to feel a baby in there, but the water sack had broken, and its entire body was super close to the opening, but it wasn't coming out. And if it was a normal baby that could have been pushed out normally, it would have been out by now. So I could tell it was stuck somehow. There were a bunch of weird shapes all together and I couldn't tell what was what really, but eventually I was able to find two legs. I couldn't tell if they were front legs or back legs. Everything was really tight in there, so the fact that I was able to grab even anything was pretty miraculous. So I got a hold of the two legs and began trying to pull this baby out. Ugh. She kept walking around and moving and trying to get more comfortable, and I didn't want to lose my grip on these tiny, slippery, slimy little legs. So this whole ordeal was very intense and very stressful. You are supposed to pull with the contractions. So I would wait for a contraction and then try to pull down and out. And the baby slowly started coming out, though it definitely was very stuck in there. From what I understand, most of the time you just have to pull a little bit or maybe a medium amount and it'll come out fairly quickly with your help. But this baby, I was yanking very hard. And poor Daisy was pushing as hard as she could. And it was just not working. But thankfully, everything seemed to be okay with the baby. It was wiggling and kicking and trying its best to come out, which was good. Sometimes it is hard for a goat to birth a stillborn baby. Because the baby won't wiggle around and kick and assist the mother in giving birth. But live babies are supposedly much easier because they will move and wiggle and kind of help the mom get them into position. Or so I've been told. I've never experienced it myself, of course. So this went on for a while. I would wait for a contraction and then pull down and out with the contraction. And nothing would move. The baby would still be very stuck in there. And poor Daisy was in so much pain and hurting so bad. And for like an hour, we had two little feet sticking out. But eventually, two feet became two little legs. And then the two legs became two full legs. I got to the armpit area. And then we started getting some body part. 
It was twisted so weirdly that I couldn't tell if it was like the ribs or the back or the belly or the butt. Oh my gosh, this was so stressful on everybody. At some point along the way, the baby passed away, which on the one hand is so tragic, but on the other hand was better because then I could focus on pulling and trying to help mama instead of worrying about hurting the baby anymore. We tried all sorts of ways and positions. I would stick my hand in, see if I could reposition things a bit. We were trying to enlarge her cervix. We were using Vaseline. Eventually, I tied a rope around the baby to see if I could help pull and get better leverage because it'd be less slippery. We were literally dragging Daisy across the field by her baby. It was stuck that well. Eventually, we reached a plateau where we couldn't get the baby out anymore. And we figured maybe we'd leave her alone for a while and let her body and her muscles readjust to the new shape. And then maybe we'll have better success after a brief respite. So after about 45 minutes, we kept pulling, kept pulling, and nothing was really moving. So we picked her up. My mom grabbed under her armpits and I grabbed around her waist and udder. And we walked her to the barn because the field is on a hill and and sometimes she had such strong contractions that she literally would roll down the hill. Oh my gosh, this entire situation was a disaster. So we got her in the barn, and my mom would hold her body still and pull on her body, and I would pull on the baby, and eventually we just gave up. The baby wasn't budging anymore. Oh my gosh, and then poor Daisy was in so much pain, and it was so hard on her, and we were out of options. So I decided to go on my trusty Facebook groups and ask the goat people on there who are far more experienced than I am what in the world we should do. And poor Daisy got to rest for like 20 minutes or a half hour. But eventually we figured out that the baby was positioned like this. We had the front legs and half of the body strangely bent and contorted out. And then we had the head and the back legs and the tail all inside still which is a very bad position for the baby to be in. And even though Daisy was not bred too young, she was full size when she got pregnant, and the buck we used, Tam, he's fairly small, even smaller than like usual. I guess she just had one huge baby, and it was too big to fit through, especially in this very strange position. The overall consensus we got from the wonderful goat people who I am so grateful for was either try to push the baby back in, and then readjust the head, and then pull it out again. Or, okay, I need to tell people this because if we had known this before, we would have done things a lot differently. And anyone else in a similar situation needs to know this information, but it's extremely graphic and most people won't need to know about this stuff. So if you don't want to watch or hear or see about disgusting, nasty, horrible things, then just skip off of here. But the other option they said was to cut the baby in half and take it out in two pieces. Oh my, I was so glad this poor baby was dead, because that is what we ended up having to do. We had tried several times to push the baby in, but this was our last shot. I cleaned off my hands, got a tub of Vaseline, and put Vaseline all over the baby, and I would, like, put Vaseline on my hand and then kind of insert it into the cervix and rub it all around so inside of Daisy and outside of Daisy and on the baby everywhere was all lubed up and pushed and everything was so tight in there but I tried to stick my hand in to like guide different body parts to be pushed into the proper directions but the head was bending one way and the feet were bending another so it was basically trying to create like a V inside her body and the baby was so stuck that we could not push it back in. So we pulled and pulled and again, oh my gosh, this poor girl. First we were pulling everything out, then we were pushing it all back in, and then we were pulling it out again. Oh my gosh, this poor girl's body. I have the pictures, but I'm not sure if I'll show it on YouTube, because it's very graphic. But I took some hedge clippers, and thankfully the neck area was exposed, so I very carefully cut the baby's head off while it was hanging out of poor Daisy so weird and so sad. I was kind of numb at this point, but even now, if I let myself think about it too much, I get really sad, so I'm just going to move on at this point. But I want to tell you that it worked. As soon as we disconnected the head from the body, poor little tired, little exhausted little Daisy gave one last half-hearted push and everything came sliding out easy as could be. And we had a baby's body and a baby's head and a placenta 
and a whole bunch of blood just sitting on the barn floor. And as soon as we finished, poor sweet Daisy, she was falling asleep in our arms. All throughout the labor, she was using us as emotional support. She would come snuggle with us or want to lay her head on us, but she was exhausted. We brought her some water, and she took a few sips, but then she just laid there. She was so tired. I think it was like 5 o'clock in the evening at this point. So she had been in labor all day, suffering so bad. But the worst part of this whole thing is that her, this is extremely graphic, but I think it'd be educational. So maybe I'll put it in. I don't know. YouTube is interesting with like monetization stuff. I don't know much about it, but I've heard bad stories about it. So I don't know if I'm going to get demonetized or if I'm going to be like banned or I don't know. So I may not add this all in, but her vent was wrecked completely wrecked. I have seen mama goats who have just given birth before and their vents are swollen and stuff but sweet daisies. It just looks like a bomb exploded. Dirt and hay and straw and leaves and rocks and Vaseline and human hands have all been shoved in her poor little body and honestly at this point I would not be surprised if she dies from infection we have got her set up in a little corner of the barn. She has all the fix-ins we could give her. She has hay to eat. She has hay as bedding. She has molasses water. She has regular water and grain and kelp. But this poor girl can barely walk. She spends most of her day just laying there. But for now, she is alive and she thankfully is still eating and drinking a little bit. She doesn't want molasses water. She doesn't want grain, which usually she loves. So I'm a bit worried about her because she's not eating or drinking very much. And she's in a world of pain. And for a while when the baby was stuck, I thought we might have to put her down. And thankfully we were able to get the baby out. But even now, we may have to put her down if she gets infection. So... That is the story, and it's the complete opposite of Violet's birth story. She had a beautiful time, and everything was wonderful and great, and Sweet Daisy just had the worst experience. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for her. I'm still kind of reeling. My emotions are really raw. And even though this is a very sad story, and very graphic, I wanted to put it out there so that if you have goats, or you're researching about goats, that you can learn from our experience. And of course, while hopefully no one in the whole world ever has this happen to them or their goats, because it is tragic, chances are someone is going to have this happen to them. And if they are aware of our experience and what did work and what didn't work, then maybe it'll help them in their situation. Maybe they will know to push the baby back into the mom and readjust the body parts a bit earlier while it is still not as stuck. Or maybe you will know to intervene earlier and not just let everything progress by itself as much. Honestly, with the knowledge we had and the tools we were equipped with, we did the best we could. And of course, looking back, you're like, oh, I should have done this or should have done this. I'm not mad at myself or beating myself up. I know we did the absolute best we could. And now that the whole thing is over, of course, there's things we change and try to do better. But that's the beauty of it. I can document it and share it with you so that you can learn from our mistakes. So hopefully all your goat births go much better than this one did for us. Thanks for watching.